Speaking Task 1 You will be asked a question about a familiar topic. You will then have 15 seconds to prepare your response, and 45 seconds to speak. Some people believe that television has a negative impact on children and should be avoided. Others feel that television is one of many ways a child can learn. Which do you believe? Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. I believe that television can both have positive and negative impacts on children, so it should not be fully avoided but instead managed correctly. Television offers a variety of educational programs that can help a child learn about different things like animals, different countries, and even basic life skills. These shows can improve a child's knowledge and also get them curious about the world. Additionally, TV can also help kids learn new languages. However, too much television can lead to less social interaction, physical activity, and it may also expose kids to inappropriate content. That's why it's important for parents to monitor what their kids are watching. In short, when used wisely, television can be a learning tool for children. Speaking Task 2 You will read a short paragraph and then listen to a conversation between two people. You will have 50 seconds to read the paragraph. After, you will get a question about what you read and heard. You will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. You have 50 seconds to read. Start reading after the beep. Now listen to the conversation between two people. Hey Adam, what's new? Not much. I just finished reading this letter in the paper. Oh, Tamara's? Yeah, that's the one. What did you think? I completely disagree with her. I don't think there's anything wrong with the library. Well, it does get backed up sometimes. Only for an hour or so, and that's right after class is let out. The rest of the time, it is completely empty. If some students could just wait until later, they could get help no problem, and the librarians wouldn't get so far behind. That's the only reason it seems so busy. Yeah, I suppose you're right. And I can't believe she thinks that the student workers in the library don't know what they're doing. I know a few of them, and I think that they actually know more than the librarians. One time, I needed to find something online for class, and the librarian working didn't know what I was talking about. However, the student worker helped me find it, print it, and I turned it in no problem. Well, if that's the case, even more librarians probably wouldn't help then. Exactly. I hope the school doesn't take her letter seriously. The man expresses his opinion on the increase in library staff. State his opinion and explain the reasons he gives for holding that opinion. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. 
The man disagrees with the idea of increasing the library staff. He believes that there is nothing wrong with the library and thinks that the only time it gets busy is right after class is let out, which lasts for about an hour. He suggests that if students can wait until later, then they can get help without any problem and the librarians wouldn't fall behind. He also disagrees with Tamara's statement that the student workers in the library do not know what they're doing. He personally knows some student workers who, he believes, actually know more than the librarians. He shares an incident where a librarian couldn't help him find something online, but a student worker was able to assist him successfully. Based on these reasons, the man feels that hiring more librarians would not solve the supposed problems in the library. Speaking Task 3 You will read a short paragraph about an academic topic then listen to a lecture about it. You will have 50 seconds to read the paragraph. After, you will get a question about what you read and heard. You will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. You have 50 seconds to read. Start reading after the beep. Now listen to the lecture. A perfect example of this concept is pronghorns and antelope. The pronghorn is found in North America, but bears a striking resemblance to the antelope, which is native to Africa. Their habitats are very far apart, but they are both flat and grassy plains with very few trees. Both of these animals evolved to eat grass, obviously, and since there is nowhere to hide in their natural environments, they've both evolved features that let them easily notice predators and quickly run away from them. They both have slender but powerful legs suited for bursts of speed, oversized lungs, and even huge eyes that give them a vast field of vision. A different example would be um, bats and dolphins. Clearly, no one is ever going to mix up a bat and a dolphin. They're totally different animals, but they do have similar habitats. Consider the fact that bats live in dark caves. They also do most of their hunting late at night when, of course, it's very dark out. Now, dolphins live in the ocean, and the ocean is also a very dark place. Deep in the ocean, most species can only see a few feet ahead, even in very clear water. To survive without being able to see well, both of these species developed a trait called echolocation. This is the ability to emit high-frequency noises, which echo off of their surroundings. They both listen for the echoes of the noises to locate objects in the environment. Using the examples from the lecture, explain the concept of convergent evolution. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. Convergent evolution is when animals living in different places have similar characteristics. 
This happens because they live in similar habitats and need similar skills to survive. For example, pronghorns and antelopes live in flat, grassy areas with few trees. They both evolve to eat grass and run fast because there is nowhere to hide from predators. They also have big eyes to see far and good lungs. Another example is bats and dolphins. They live in dark places, so they both developed echolocation, which is the ability to make sounds and listen for echoes to find things in their surroundings. Even though they look very different, bats and dolphins have similar traits because they live in similar environments. This shows how animals can evolve in the same way even if they are not closely related. You will listen to a lecture about an academic topic. After, you will get a question about what you heard. You will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. Now listen to the lecture. Realism is an artistic and literary movement that emerged in the 19th century as a reaction to earlier art forms, idealistic and romantic tendencies. Realism sought to depict the world as it is, with all of its flaws and imperfections, rather than as it should be in some idealized vision. In this context, the individual played an important role in realism, which sought to capture the human experience in a more realistic and truthful manner. Realist writers were interested in delving into their characters' internal lives, revealing their thoughts, feelings, and motivations in novel ways. Realism was concerned not only with representing the external world, but also with representing the internal world of humans. Individuals, according to realists, are shaped by their surroundings, and their experiences are influenced by the social, economic, and political forces of their time. As a result, the individual in realism was viewed as a product of their environment, rather than an isolated entity. Realists wanted to depict the human condition in all of its complexities, which necessitated a focus on the individual as a distinct and multifaceted character. Realist characters, unlike the one-dimensional characters of romantic literature, were not defined by a single trait or quality. They were instead depicted as complex individuals with conflicting emotions, motivations, and desires. Realists were interested in delving into their characters' internal lives, revealing their thoughts, feelings, and motivations in novel ways. What did realism try to depict? Include points and examples from the lecture. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. Realism tried to depict the world as it truly is, without idealizing or romanticizing it. Instead of presenting an idealized vision of the world, realism aimed to show the flaws and imperfections of reality. Realists focused on the individual and sought to capture the complexity of the human experience. They wanted to delve into the internal lives of their characters, revealing their thoughts, emotions, and motivations in unique ways. Unlike the one-dimensional characters of romantic literature, realist characters were depicted as multifaceted and complex. They had conflicting emotions, motivations, and desires. Realism also recognized that individuals are shaped by their surroundings and influenced by social, economic, and political forces. In summary, realism aimed to depict the true complexities of the human condition.